nobody else can give you that validation, love, or support other than yourself. And when you let that go, you can start to feel worthy, whole, and complete just for being you. Then you can start being your most authentic self. Even if people don't like you, you're okay with that because polarizing isn't bad. This episode was a very fun episode, but also a very vulnerable episode where I open up and share some things I've never really shared before um, in the hopes that you're able to kind of look at your own shadow in certain ways and uh, really be vulnerable with yourself. I think one of the reasons I goal myself and I try to be as vulnerable as I can is so that you can also be vulnerable with yourself. And uh, that's something that I definitely did. I opened up in this episode a lot and share with you uh, the main takeaways I've had from 2020, the main shadow work that I've done, my own childhood wounds, the different things that I've, I've uh, healed and gone through and how I'm so transformed. I feel like literally a different person than I did before. But in this episode, I'm going to share with you what those are. Before we get into it, I want to show some love to our sponsor, which is Organifi. Many of you know this is one of my favorite things to do. This is how I have high vibrational energy. This is what I do to stay in high vibe. I do not drink caffeine. I do not drink coffee. But what I do is I use Organifi Green Juice and Organifi Red Juice. These are both my favorite. Let me explain to you a little bit about Organifi. It's a blend using science to back up the most effective doses of ingredients that are organic and free of fillers and contain less than three grams of sugar per serving. Oh my gosh. You guys know three grams of sugar is not that much. And a lot of this stuff you see, you guys see naked juice at the, at the store, naked or whatever it's called, like 20 something grams of sugar. That's crazy. Sugar is acidic, not good for the body. So Organifi Green Juice is essential superfoods with a clinical dose of what's called ashwagandha. Ashwagandha. Sounds like something from uh, Black Panther. I forget the name of what that stuff, I forget. But anyways, ashwagandha helps with reduced stress. You feel uh, healthy levels of cortisol goes down. Cortisol is a stress hormone. And it is uh, very powerful. There's 11 superfoods for resetting the body to feeling amazing. Can you guys feel how amazing you can feel my voice right now? How much energy I have? Guess why? Organifi Green Juice. It takes just 30 seconds. No shopping, chopping, juicing, or blending. 30 seconds. All you do is get the powder, you put it in with a little bit of something, you mix it up, and you drink it. 600 milligrams of clinically proven ashwagandha, which is an adaptogen. Adaptogen. It adapts and stuff. 100% organic USDA certified organic. It decreases cortisol, and it helps reduce that stress. It promotes a healthy response to stress, and it tastes delicious in just plain water. You don't need juice or anything else. No need for even a blender. It encourages the feeling of healthiness and productivity at work with your loved ones. You don't need caffeine. You're going to feel high vibe as AF. And it is just amazing. It's less than $3 a day. I highly, highly recommend the green juice. I would use it every single day. Go check it out. All you do is right now, you can get 15% off. All you do is you go to Organifi.com slash Aaron15. That's O-R-G-A-N-I-F-I dot com forward slash Aaron15. Use code Aaron15 at Check out, and guess what? You're going to get 15% off. You can also try the Organifi Protein, which I use every single day as well. It's delicious. I mix it and make protein ice cream. I do a lot with it. The chocolate's my favorite, but there's also vanilla for those of you that like vanilla. But be honest, most of you guys like chocolate like me. And there's other stuff as well. But anyways, go to Organifi.com slash Aaron15. Check it out. Those are the top products that I use. It's high vibrational supplements. It's less than $3 a day. It's worth your health. Get rid of caffeine. Get rid of coffee. That's just my personal preference. There's no crash, and you'll feel amazing. So Organifi.com slash Aaron. Anyways, let's get into the rest of this episode right meow. Today, I'll be sharing with you my top insights from doing shadow work pretty much all of 2020. <laughs> pretty much all of 2020. The main theme of this year for me has been doing a massive amount of shadow work. Now, what is shadow work? Shadow and the shadow that each of us has is the unconscious part of ourselves we're not aware of that is running different aspects of our life. And when we do shadow work, it is completely life transforming. And this year of my life has been the most transformative year of my life, hands down. I've done more shadow work this year than I've done in the prior years I've been alive. And in this episode, what I wanted to do is to share with you those top insights so that as you go through your own levels of shadow work, maybe this represents or this reflects something back to you, but also 
I think that moving into 2021 and beyond, it's going to be more and more of the unraveling of our own shadow. And whether that's masculine, feminine integration, healing from the uh, childhood wounds that we may have, whether that's bringing unconscious things just into the light so that we can transmute them and integrate it. Um, if you look at also the shadow of the collective consciousness, right now you'll see that that shadow is coming up for all of us to see. I went to a family dinner recently, and it was funny because when I was there, my even my grandma, who watches a shit ton of news, she watches a lot, a lot of news. She buys into it. Even her, she was talking about how she felt a lot of stuff happening in the world is orchestrated, which I thought wasn't like for her. My nana be saying that. I'm like, what is going on here? Even she thinks people think there's something going on. It's very obvious. Even if, even if they watch the news a lot, if it's almost like the more you watch the news, the more likely you are to kind of see through it, but you might still watch it. And uh, I don't watch the news at all anymore, but um, the collective shadow is definitely being brought up, you know, not to get too esoteric and weird, but I've do, done other videos on this before, but I know I knew someone in my life is no longer here, but that worked for some type of government behind the government operation that said that a lot of things is for someone I trust. And basically there's a lot going on that we're not aware of. There are operations and underground uh, facilities that deal with different experiments and the government knows of ET existence and stuff like that. There's many whistleblowers that point to this information as well, but this is something that I knew somebody that did this for 20, 30 years and they told me about what happened before they passed away. And it was very, it blew my mind. It opened me up and realized, wait, reality is not all of what we are being projected. And as more and more of this information comes out, whether it's about the Snowden stuff or other stuff, it's coming out of the shadows and into the light for us to become aware of. And it is, uh, it is powerful. And it's also, you know, where people are losing faith in the media. They're losing faith in understanding how the government, you know, there's, there's basically where I was going with what I was saying is at a collective level, there's different elite levels of organization with the intention of keeping people in certain states of consciousness, whether that is fear, whether that is in a reactive state, because when they're in fear or a reactive state, they're much easier to control. And when people are much easier to control, it's much easier to control what's happening in the world. And a lot of what could be happening right now is pointing at different forms of manipulation. Our emotions, the energies are, are, min, are have an intention of manipulation there. People can feel that even with this new election thing happening. It's still going on, by the way. As I record this right now, there's still stuff going on with that. They're still figuring things out. But... What I think is obvious is that there's other things going on. Do I know exactly what it is? No. But this is an example of what is happening in the collective shadow. The collective shadow is bringing up, and this is the part of the planet we're moving into, that we've been moving into what's called the Kali Yuga. It's a new era, a time of consciousness on the planet. You call it the age of Aquarius. We're becoming aware of these different shadow aspects of ourself and moving forward it's going to continue to increase more and more. We have an old system that's not really working. And there are people on the planet that have dark intentions of keeping people in lower states of consciousness so that they can remain in control. And what they're doing right now is they are moving the things, the last cards up their sleeve to try to retain that level of power and control. But I believe it is not going to actually work. I believe too many people are waking up. I believe it is actually backfiring on them. Because the more things they do, the more people are questioning things. Now, that's what's happening in the collective level. But remember, the collective level is a reflection of the internal level. Now, let me also say this. This is a larger aspect consciousness view of it. But I think it's important because sometimes when people start going down certain rabbit holes, they then get caught into this like, they're doing that to us and we have to fight. But what happens is that a lot of times, I believe, actually feeds the negative paradigm without us even knowing it. It's like we're almost feeding out of fear, like, oh, can you believe that these negative agenda people could do this kind of thing? 
And then that feeds the actual paradigm itself. So the thing I want to point your awareness to is that where is the energy going? Because it may not actually be conducive if when I was studying a lot of the stuff at the beginning of the year, when the stuff happened at the beginning of the year, I started looking into it. It became very obvious that there's other stuff going on. But I was very much aware that it started to drain my energy. So I started to take my attention away from it. And I started to put it more back on my purpose and what I'm meant to kind of do. And for me, that's helped people wake up to more of who they are. It's sharing this kind of information. So, uh, but, but, but the larger consciousness aspect I want to put your attention on is that we are all eternal spiritual beings live in temporary human experiences. And in this reality, we went, we went through a process of forgetting who we were so that we can then remember who we were, who we are. And that made it very challenging. Many of you watching this video or listening to this on the podcast have been through a lot of pain growing up because that pain created pressure and that pressure caused you then to wake up. Now, what's happening is the collective is going through a lot of pressure so that they can then wake up. It is a way of us evolving to a new level of consciousness. Eckhart Tolle has even talked about this in the new earth. If we literally want to survive this era on the planet, we have to evolve to a new state of consciousness. Now, the thing I want to put your attention on, though, is that when it comes to these negative agenda people, realize that even though they have negative agendas, they came here to play a part in this game of life. This really is like a form of game. We are eternal spiritual beings having temporary human experiences. And what they are doing is they are playing the, maybe the negative role, people who've forgotten who they are, but at the deepest level, they are a reflection of us. We are all connected. We're all one consciousness. They're playing a different role. And when we judge them, we hate them. We can say what they're doing is wrong. We can have that awareness, you know, of manipulating the people and, and getting people into fear so that they're much easier to control. That can be wrong. But the thing we have to be aware of is that they are also us. They're just playing the part. It kind of makes it a little bit lighter when we realize that. And that's the thing that I, I like to remember is that, you know, they came here to play that part of the game. We came here to play the part of the game of the light workers. We're helping people become aware of who they are. We're light workers. The shadow side of the light worker, by the way, is that then we start to think we're really significant. <laughs> I'm the chosen one. I have come to enlighten humanity to wake up to a new level of consciousness. You see, that's the shadow of the ego, the shadow of the spiritual ego. When I first went through my spiritual awakening in 2012, I was like becoming aware of all this information, super excited and stoked to be sharing this with people. But then what happened is people didn't understand me. They didn't like that. I was talking about like all this esoteric stuff and I started meditating and I wasn't smoking weed or drinking anymore. And they're like, what's going on, Aaron? Why aren't you the same? And then I was like, don't you just meditate? Let's do these mantras. Om Shri, and I was doing all these mantras, and they're like, this is weird, Aaron's weird, and then what happened is I said, you know what, you guys just don't get it, you guys just aren't as evolved as me, you guys just sleep still, you sleepers, you guys are sleeping, sleeper, sleeper, sleep, that was kind of the mentality of trying to, <laughs> and then the family and friends didn't understand it, my mom got it though, my mom was like, she jumped on board pretty quick, but everyone else didn't really get it. And I felt very alone. So my way of bypassing that was like, okay, all these sleeping sleepers don't get it. They're just asleep in the matrix. But then I realized, whoa, that's my spiritual ego trying to feel significant, trying to justify this aloneness. Realize being alone isn't bad. Lonely, eh, you might want to, you know, redefine that a little bit, but alone is not bad. 